Earlier this year, I spoke with the Attorney General of New South Wales, the Honourable Mark Speakman, MP, at an outreach event hosted by Wesley Mission. The event was attended by, 100, by over 150 people in the Wesley Centre. And I asked Mark about his career before entering politics. Well, I, um, I come from a place called the one and only Shire. <laughs> Uh, I grew up there. Uh, I went to school at uh, state schools uh, in Caringbar, uh, Caringbar North and Caringbar High. Uh, then I went to uh, university, Sydney University, did an economics degree and a law degree. Uh, went off to Cambridge for a year to do my masters. Uh, met my lovely wife Caroline in the, the late uh, 1980s and um, celebrating 30 years of marriage this year. Uh, two kids, 27 and 23, one boy, one girl. So you got away at least for a year out of Australia, really, to get some different kind of perspective. Was that important for you? Look, it was a fantastic life experience. Um, uh, I, I, it's something I would recommend to anyone in their, in their 20s to go overseas to study or to work, uh, to get a broader experience of life. I think that's important here. I mean, when I came from with so many universities and you went all over, but yeah. many stay even in their own homes with families for all kinds of economic reasons yeah. as well as others. So the going away was important. But why law? Why law? Um, it's, it's, a career is perhaps something you look back on in, in retrospect rather than something you plan. Uh, when I went to university, I knew I was interested in humanities. Um, I didn't do any science in years 11 or 12. I didn't want to be an engineer or a doctor or anything scientific. Uh, and I guess I probably just drifted into a legal practice. I could have gone off and done banking or, or economics, uh, but I got on that conveyor belt and, and stayed on it. And in law, there's a seriousness about the role as well, isn't there? And I don't mean that in any yeah. negative way, but there is a seriousness about the role that you play. Oh, absolutely. And your first duty as a lawyer is to the court and to the legal process and the legal system uh, rather than your client. Uh, so it is a very serious and So why, politi honourable why politics then? Uh, look, I've had a lifelong interest in politics. Um, we, we are on the planet uh, for a, uh, a blink of an eyelid. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to think that uh, I have made a public contribution, a positive contribution to my brothers and sisters in Australia in some way, and then uh, politics is a great way to do it. Um, so you, 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 you followed somebody, Malcolm Kerr did 27 years yes. as a member of parliament. I won't be there that long. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe, maybe it's a mark of the changing there, may not, there probably won't be Malcolm Kerrs in politics quite again in the same way of that kind of length of time. I mean, since yeah. I've been here, I, I wonder how many premiers and prime ministers have we had? And it takes something... <laughs> I know one person in the room will know the exact answer to that. But the, 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 uh, you know, the, we don't have those long-term periods of time anymore. Have we lost something in that? Oh, look, mate, I think there's a couple of things. Um, I think... Probably these days, politics is a period of your life you t which is taken out of your general career. It's not a vocation for life like it might have been in the past. And the scrutiny of the media and the intrusion of social media is uh, much more savage than it was and 10, really 20, 30, 40 years moment, ago. Yeah, so really? I think the pace of politics has changed. Bob, Bob Menzies would go off to watch the, the ashes in England and catch the boat. Uh, it would be unimaginable now. Uh, politics has changed, life has changed, the rapidity of change, mm. the kind of world that we, we're living in. An easy subject, cricket. Let's just, <laughs> let's just ask the question, not to debate cricket, because, you know, very serious, these are sad days mm. in cricket, not just for Australia, but I think for, for all of us in cricket. In fact, synonymous, it, we even say, don't we, it's not cricket almost as though the term describes yep. honesty, fairness, and all that goes with that. The one thing that, in my mind, I found difficult was at first, now this may not be the case now, I'm, I'm quite sure that the CEO has gone out there and the mor there's a term for the moral uh, person that's <laughs> gone out there. I think that this whole question of I've been found out seems to feel more prevalent than we did wrong at first. I don't think I'd agree with that. I think, look, if there's any silver lining from what's happened in the last week, it's the almost universal outrage at what happened. Not that they were, they were stupid enough to get caught. I was thinking of the players at themselves at first rather than the public. Because there's yeah. no doubt what this has proved is there's no doubt 
what is the national game in Australia. We can talk about AFL, we can talk about uh, rugby league, but cricket is our game, and, and we acknowledge that. But at first, the, the fact that we saw it on the camera, and the players saw it on the camera, seemed to be, it's changed since then, of course, radically in the last few days. But this separation that appeared in, in the first case in Canberra, and now between personality and person, and what's right and wrong, is an issue. It, it is an issue, um, but probably what is more important in people's personal lives and what they bring into their public life is, is honesty and integrity. Um, that's not to excuse any peccadillos that people may have engaged in, um, but I think overwhelmingly uh, the focus about people's private behaviour has to be on their, their honesty and integrity. Mm. That interview was filmed earlier this year, not long before the news about the cricket that we don't talk about actually occurred. We'll see the second part of that interview next week and talk about the coming together of politics and the Christian faith for Mark.